What is going on my breakaway family? You already know what it is. I'm back at you with another video and in this video we're going to be talking about three ways to stay motivated to work out. But before we get into that, if you're watching this video, please give this video a like. Please subscribe to the channel. Check out our Instagram page at breakawayfitness underscore. And also check out our apparel account at breakawayfitnessapparel. Also, you guys, I would really, really appreciate it if you could also go on our website at breakawayfitness.com. Grab you some apparel. I have beanies, t-shirts, crew necks, hoodies, hats. I got all kinds of stuff on there. If you really want to, you know, go the extra mile and represent and support this business. Now, let's get into these three tips to stay motivated to work out. Tip number one is going to be gratefulness having an attitude of gratefulness now you guys the ability to work out the blessing in itself the blessing of getting in your car driving to the gym working out is a huge blessing and i want to share with you all something to kind of put this into perspective did you know that if you live in america and you have a smartphone you are within the top 2% of the world's wealth. You are richer than 98% of the rest of the world. Look you all, the opportunities that you have just by living in America, just by having a smartphone are amazing. Do not take those things for granted. I'm sure there is people across the world who would give their life they would probably try and give their life so that their family, so their kids and their wife, just so they could have an opportunity to live here in America. Here in America, we have it made. We are living the dream. We are living the dream that millions of other people would rather be living in. And yet we find ourselves complaining about the smallest, most insignificant things that we could complain about. It's time to start being grateful for what you have. Having a car to drive, the ability to work out in a commercial gym or a private gym or wherever you work out is such a huge blessing. So don't ever take those blessings for granted. I wanna share a scripture with you all and this scripture is out of Colossians chapter two verses six through seven. And it says, so then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. And I want to say that one more time. Overflowing with thankfulness. So just think about it, you guys. A cup, right? When you go to the fridge, you get water, you know, you're filling it up and you know, obviously you stop it before it begins to overflow. So just think about it. If you have a continuous stream of water going into your cup, right? It's going to fill up all the way to the point where it's going to overflow. So we need to be overflowing with thankfulness. It needs to be an everyday thing. We're pouring into that cup. We're overflowing it with thankfulness, giving God thanks. God, thank you for another day. Thank you for the opportunity to own a vehicle or drive a vehicle to work. Thank you for the ability to work out. Guys, we need to be overflowing with thankfulness. And out of that overflow, if we are truly, truly thankful and grateful for everything that we have, it'll then motivate us to take advantage of the things that we have around us. Being able to work out and better ourselves is going to motivate us. Wow, God, thank you for this opportunity that I can become a better person. I can become more useful and productive for the kingdom of God. The second tip I have for you guys is chase the feeling of accomplishment you know no one ever comes out of the gym saying oh that workout should have never happened i should have never worked out today when you leave the gym after a workout you feel great and anybody who's worked out and has had a solid workout you know the feeling you know the feeling of walking out of that gym 
having a sense of accomplishment and being proud of the work that you just put in. The endorphins that are released while you're working out are the same endorphins that are gonna make you feel good. You know, when you leave the gym, you're gonna feel like you've conquered the world or that you can conquer the world because of that sense of accomplishment. I'm gonna give you two words, build momentum. If you struggle with working out, if you're just not motivated, if you just can't seem to find that rhythm, you gotta build momentum. If you can be consistent for one week, you hit all your workouts, you get all your meals in, you hit your macros. If you can do that for a week, it's like a ball that, that just started rolling, right? Just started rolling and then, you know, as you do it for a second week, a third week, then that turns into a month, to two months, to three months, to a year. Now you're rolling down that hill. You're staying consistent with your training, with your workouts. Now I'm not saying you have to be perfect. You know, just build that momentum. Once you build that momentum, consistency becomes a lot easier. And you're never gonna build momentum if you just sit on the couch and you binge watch Netflix and you eat chips and you drink beer, whatever it is that you do. You're never going to build that momentum if you don't take action. Tip number three for building the motivation to work out is going to be understanding this statement. The statement goes, comfort is the enemy of greatness. Look, if you want to be great, you are going to have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Life isn't just going to hand you everything that you need or everything that you want. Life isn't just going to give it to you. You got to work for it. You got to put in the hours. You got to build the credentials. No one can just sit on the couch and accomplish their goals or dreams or visions that God has placed in their hearts. The same goes for our faith. Faith without works is dead. If you want to show people that you have a strong faith, you do it by your actions. What do your actions show? What do they show to other people? Do they look at you? Do they look at you and think, oh yeah, you know what? He really talks the talk and he really walks the walk. Is that how people look at you? Do they see you and see, wow, man, he has a genuine faith. He puts in the work, he puts in the hours, he reads his Bible, he prays, he worships God, he spends time in community with other believers, he's really focused on, you know, the things that are above. Is that how people look at you? You're not gonna show other people your faith by writing God first in your profile and thinking that that's enough. That's not enough. It takes action. It takes putting in the work. You have to take the time to put in the work. And it's not gonna be an overnight process. It's gonna be a consistent process. If you stay consistent, the results will follow. You know, I was watching a video the other day and this guy was talking about if you go to the gym, you work out, you eat clean for a day, and you look in the mirror the next day, you might not see a change or you won't see a change. If you go the second day, you go to the gym, you work out, you eat your meals, and you look at yourself the day after that, you're not gonna see a change. Even after the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, the sixth day, the seventh day. And maybe you won't start seeing change until 30 days after. But if you do it long enough, if you take action long enough, the results will come. The results will be there. Your actions will eventually line up with what you see. Whatever you do, whatever it is, whether you're a janitor, whether you're a teacher, whether you work at a restaurant, whether you're a manager at a restaurant or a manager of a business, or whatever it is, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Do it all as if you're working unto the Lord. Colossians 3.23 And I want to share a scripture with you all. It is out of Proverbs chapter 6, verses 6 through 11. And it says, Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. 
Another scripture is Proverbs chapter 21, verse 25, and it says, The craving of a sluggard will be the death of him, because his hands refuse to work. Do you want to be great? Do you want to do great things? Do you want to be useful and productive for the kingdom of God? you got to put in the work. you got to put in the hours. Whether that's in the gym, you know, whether that's at your job, whether that's in your own home, whatever it is you got to put in the work we weren't created to just you know slouch around and, and not do anything we were called to make disciples of all nations and what does that require that requires work on our part that requires action we got to take action if we want to make disciples of all nations if jesus told us he commanded us to make disciples of all nations and we're sitting on the couch we are not living up to our full potential I really, really hope that you guys, you know, would be able to take these three tips and really take them into consideration. You know, reflect on this. Do some self-reflection. Take some time out of your day to think about it. Am I being grateful? Am I understanding that, that after I work out, I have a sense of accomplishment? Do I understand that if I am too comfortable in life right now, I will never be great. I'm never going to be great. I'm never going to do great things if I'm just sitting around comfortable. I'm going to have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. I want to be useful and productive for the kingdom. That should be our goal. Anyways, you guys, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I really, really hope this helps. Comment below if this helped you out or if you have any thoughts or questions or concerns. I truly appreciate y'all. As always, I love y'all and God bless.